So thank you. It's so great to see a live audience again, isn't it? I have been dreaming about this moment for more than a year. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here, making the trek out, braiding the traffic and all that stuff that we've forgotten how to do in the last year. Um, delighted to see you here in such strong numbers. Yay, for Intermezzo audience. As you know, this is our 20th season, so um, we're also happy to be here and I'm thrilled that all my friends, you and my musician friends are here with me to play for you. So we will begin with a little gem uh, for violin and piano, and uh, then um, we'll proceed to the franc, but I'll probably talk a little bit about the music. We don't have program notes tonight, so I wanted to tell you a little bit about what you're going to be listening to tonight. Thank you.
I think my page turner deserves a round of applause too. I, I don't know if you've seen him lunging for the, thank you, Nate. Um, you're probably going to see more of that because the wind doesn't seem to be easing down. And my friends are smarter than I am. They have iPads which uh, don't have pages to be blown over. So the first thing I'm doing after I'm done with this concert is going online and buying an iPad and foot pedals for next Monday. Um, as I've already mentioned, this is Intermenza's 20th season, and um, we wouldn't be here after so many years without incredible support we have received from you and um, our friends in the community. And if the COVID year has taught us anything, I think, at least for me personally, it's how valuable it is to have a community and family and friends and to build and nurture those relationships. Um, I would like to take a moment to thank everybody who made this possible. Um, firstly, all the musicians who didn't run away when it started to, to blow really hard. Thank you very much for being here tonight. Thank you all for, for coming out. And I would like to thank the team at the Grand America as well. They have done an incredible job of putting this together for us and giving us this beautiful space um, to use for our 20th season. I'd like to thank Suzanne and Whitney, Jenny, Javier, and Jeff for all of their help in um, providing technical and organizational support tonight, as well as all the staff who has been here and picking up all the little bits of responsibilities to make sure that the event is going smoothly. I'm a little bit sorry we can't see the fountain tonight, but like I said, before the concert started, the wind was um, showering everybody with sprinkles, and that will not do when you have uh, nearly a million dollars worth of string instruments <laughs> lined up here, so we had to turn that off. Um, Tonight is um, the first concert of the season, and I wanted to take a moment to, to um, remember Rachel Barrett Navarro, who was a dear friend, co-founder of Intermezzo, uh, a board member for 20 years, and a passionate supporter of classical music. She passed away recently at the beginning of this year and was not able to come and enjoy our 20th season. And I know that she will be very proud that we have made it this far. Um, I miss her terribly. Um, every concert that I have ever played, she came to and would always say the same thing afterwards. She said, well, you didn't disappoint the family. Sometimes she said, you, you made the family proud, but it was always a family. And, and Intermezzo really truly has been a family. We have, like for example, Lun, who is playing this next piece with me, he has been playing on Intermezzo since the very beginning, um, 20 years ago, and every season since. And it really does feel like a big family of musicians and audiences every year. Um, we invite newcomers to the area. Laura, who just played this beautiful rendition of the 4 just moved to Salt Lake City three years ago, and boy, did she come at a wrong time, right? Because everything started to shut down pretty much soon after she arrived. So I'm thrilled that she's here tonight. She will return with the Brahms String Quintet. The piece that she and I played is by Gabriel Fauré, um, After a Dream, and it sort of feels appropriate this whole year has been a dream, so coming out of uh, some kind of a trance-like state feels, feels just about right. Faure was a French composer, um, a very modest and humble man who supported his family of musicians and worked hard to be a giving and generous person and very unassuming, and so his career probably was not as big as that of César Franck, who is the composer, also French, of the sonata that Lynn and I are going to play for you. Now, this sonata is a very special piece of music. It has an interesting background. It was written in about 1880, and um, towards the end of Franck's life, and he wrote it as a wedding gift to a young 
Belgian violin virtuoso, uh, Jean Isai, um, who was only 28 um, years of age at that time. And can you imagine get, getting a wedding gift like that, like an incredible piece of music? Like here, I wrote this for you, for your wedding. Um, they were bo both Belgian and born in the same city. And so Franck honored him with this gift. And as I liked it very much, as I himself was a composer, he wrote, those, those of us who are um, familiar with solo violin repertory, as I has written probably, I don't know, half of the hardest violin repertoire that, that there is for solo violin, the six violin sonatas, which he in turn dedicated to different violinists. But um, the Frank Sonata uh, was dedicated to, to him, as I said, and um, Isaiah kept it in his repertoire for 40 years. He played it at many, many concerts with many different pianists, and apparently he would always say to the audiences that he was playing it con amore, because it was a wedding gift. Um, interestingly, next concert, we have another wedding gift piece that um, composer Steve Rowans has um, written for a friend's 50th wedding anniversary. So this was for his eyes first. Next week you get to hear the 50th. So I hope you will come back and hear that as well. I have a personal anecdote to tell you about this sonata. Um, I was um, a student at Indiana University and had very good fortune to have been there at a time when many of the great musicians and teachers of the 20th century were in their golden years. And this was a case with Joseph Gingold, violin teacher at Indiana, who studied with Isai, uh, for whom Frank wrote this piece. So I didn't know that at the time, and I played a lot for um, Mr. Gingold's studio, and got coached on this piece, and um, I still have very fond memories of all of his beautiful, very growly, low voice, and he would sort of shout out directions, musical directions, and I had no idea that I was getting, that what was being passed on to me was coming one generation away from Isai, which is kind of incredible if you think about it, so, and now I know, and I am, I consider myself very fortunate to have had that experience. So I hope you enjoyed as much as Lynn and I do. It's one of the greatest pieces for violin and piano. Heifetz played it on his very last recital.
we made it. Um, so we'll take a short intermission, 10 minutes, maybe 15, and uh, we will continue with the Brahms string quintet number one. And uh, see you back here.
I hope everybody's seated. Um, excited to hear the Brahms. This is um, evidently Brahms's favorite chamber work. Um, he wrote that he had never written anything so wonderful and lovely and engaging, and I won't keep the performance much longer uh, because everyone is tuned and ready to go and we're relatively windless right now. But I just have a little challenge for the audience. So in about, it's, it's about 30 minutes long and the last five minutes, the rhythm, if you ever tapped your foot to the beat, you know, like music is going, you're tapping your foot. When you get to the last five minutes of this piece, the rhythm becomes so crazy that you can't find the beat. So just see if you can, like start tapping your foot at some point, like maybe seven minutes in, at, at the like 23rd minute, to see if you can keep up with it to the end because it's actually quite tricky. Anyway, enjoy and uh, see you next Monday.
I completely forgot to tell you about the parking. Be sure to take a validation before you head out. And the way it works is you just put your parking ticket in the machine and then instead of inserting your credit card, you put the validation in. And that should be pretty simple. Um, I hope it goes smoothly. And if it doesn't, let us know and we'll try and fix it for next time. Thank you again. Good night.